Now let's take a look uh, for <clears throat> a few moments at the Parsha. First, we have in this week's Parsha the mitzvah of V'chai Bahem. And I want to speak about that for a few moments. Parsha's Achrei Mos. It's quite interesting. The name of the Parsha is Achrei Mos. After the two sons of Aaron died because of uh, because of the Torahs that they brought into the Mishkan at a time and a place that they weren't commanded to do so. The name of the Parsha is Achrei Mos. After death. After the death of Nodav and Avil, the Rabboni Shalom told Moshe what Avodos Yom Kippur means. So we're back to Yom Kippur. We'll talk about that today. We're back to Yom Kippur for this week's Parsha and the Kriya Satora and Shabbos is going to let us go back to Yom Kippur. But there were Parsha's Achrimos. After the death of Nadav and Avihu for bringing the Ketores improperly, the Rabbonu Shlolom taught Moshe, to te- taught Moshe how to teach Aaron to do the Avod on Yom Kippur. We all know Parsha's Achrimos, the Avod of Yom Kippur is what we read Yom Kippur in the morning. So this Shabbos, when we read Pasha's Achrimos, it's a shtickly Yom Kippur. And we need another Yom Kippur. But in this Pasha called Achrimos, right before the Pasha of Arayot, the Pasha of forbidden relationships, the Torah says as follows, Perek Yudches, Vaydabr Hashem Lamosha Leymar, Dabrel B'nei Yisroh, Amat Aleyam, Anei Hashem Lakevin. Speak to the Jewish people and tell them that I am God. Do not continue to live your affairs and conduct your life in any which way, culturally or otherwise, the way you saw things happening in Mitzrayim. You spent 210 years in Mitzrayim, and that's a pretty tough thing to do, to spend 210 years in Mitzrayim and get rid of the sick culture of Mitzrayim. And it's going to be, but it's pretty hard, we all know that, to spend 2,000 years in Golis and get rid of that sick culture that we became imbued with. And we need a lot of help from the Rabbana Shalom to get all of that sick uh, culture out of us. And some of those ideas, many of those ideas that came with us over 2,000 years in Golis, wherever we were, we need a lot of help to cleanse that. So Rabbana Shalom says, remember, I'm God. You spent 210 years in Mitzrayim. Do not copy anything that you took from, from Mitzrayim with you. Do not do that. It's over Mitzrayim. And you're coming now into Eretz Canaan. I'm going to bring you into Eretz Yisrael. And there's a lot of abomination going on in Eretz Canaan. The Goyim there are unbelievable. And as you go through Eretz Canaan, you're going to see things and find things don't copy them. So this is a very, very big Nisoyen from Klal Yisrael. Their history at this point is Mitzrayim. And that's a culture in and of itself, a sick culture that had to be uprooted from the lives and the minds and the hearts of the Jewish people. And now the Rabbanu Shalom says, guess what? You're going into a new land and you're going to find all kinds of abominations there too. You're going to find Canaanim that do all kinds of sick things and live a very sick culture. Don't follow it. So the past has a culture you need to forget, and your future has a culture that you can't learn. You're Jewish people. Forget the culture you learned in Gaulus, and don't learn the new culture that you're going to be, uh, that you may try to learn upon entry into Eretz Canaan. The famous posse. Do not follow their laws, whatever the parameters of that's complicated in itself. Shulchan Aruch on this, Chukasem Loisei is not a mantra. We can't turn the Torah into a mantra. Somebody doesn't like something, they say, Oi, it's Yehorik Val Yavo, which we'll talk about in a moment. Oh, you see signs up sometimes, voting in an Israeli election, it's Yehorik Val Yavo. These things are very, very holy concepts given to us by God. When a Jewish person has to die for the sake of Torah, 
is a holy concept that's a limited concept because God loves Jews. He wants them to live, and that's what we're going to learn about in a moment. The idea that we take sentences in the Torah and make a mantra out of it, Oi, that's Yehor Gvalyavar. Don't do that. It's not Yehor Gvalyavar unless it's Yehor Gvalyavar in Shulchan Aruch. Otherwise, it's not Yehor Gvalyavar. And if you want to make your point, just say, that's not a nice thing. It's a very bad thing. It's an awful thing. It's a terrible thing. Say whatever you want. But don't make your Hari Valyavar into your own personal mantra. And Bukhukai Sayyam Lai Seilechu is not a mantra. He's a Simonim in Shulchan Aruch. Oi, he's wearing his hat this way. Bukhukai Sayyam Lai Seilechu. Oi, he's doing this. Bukhukai Sayyam Lai Seilechu. Before you say something's Bukhukai Sayyam Lai Seilechu, open Shulchan Aruch and take a look at what the Lacha Bukhukai Sayyam Lai Seilechu is. I read Shuva yesterday. I read it last year and I reread it yesterday. Is it to stand up for the siren? After all, this is something that the Goyim do. And it seems to be their idea that there's a moment of silence and the moment of silence begins with a siren and you bow your head in silence. Is that And there are people all around Eretz Yisrael that refuse to get up for the siren. Because who is Eloi Zelechu? I wonder if any of these people who scream who can say Eloi Zelechu ever open Shulchan Aruch to look up the laws of who can say Eloi Zelechu. It's a mantra. You're doing something I don't like. You're doing something I don't agree with. So therefore, it must be something the guy you're doing you can't do. Who can say Eloi Zelechu is not a mantra. At any rate, the tshuva went through the halachas of who can say Eloi Zelechu. And no matter what definition you use for Hussein Lois Eleichu or Shulchan Aruch, standing up for a siren is not a violation of Hussein Lois Eleichu in any which way. <clears throat> so it's in this week's Pasha, Hussein Lois Eleichu. So God warns us, listen, Kindalach, 210 years, you became imbued with a sick culture of its rhyme. Get rid of it. You're now coming into Eretz Canaan, you're going to find Canaanim Gentiles who have another sick culture. Don't learn from it. And don't follow their kind, their laws. You follow my laws now. Not the, the Mitzrian laws, not the Canaanim laws, your Torah laws. You shall observe my Torah and Mitzvahs and you shall live them. I am God. Vachai Bahem. And the Gemara learns out from these words, Vachai Bahem, Velo Shiyamus Bahem. A person is not to die for the sake of Torah. And we know that there are three exceptions. The Gemara learns out from Sukkim, there are three exceptions. Avodazari, Gili Raish, Vichazdamim, and in certain other times, Shaz Ashmad, and there can be circumstances, Lahav Raladas. Anyone that's interested in this very, uh, very deep and important sugya of when is it? When is there an exception of a Chaibahem? You can take a look in Sanhedrin, that Ayin Dalad, one of the places where the sugya of Yohar Val Yavar is. But it's a sugya. And it's not a mantra. And in this week's Pasha, we learn out the Chaibahem. The Rabbani Shalom wants us to live. And if a guy comes to us and says, I'm going to kill you unless you eat Chaza, you eat the Chaza. Unless under very circus, limited circumstances, Shas Hashmad, Lahaf al Das, those are complicated halachas discussed in the Gemara and discussed in Shulchan Aruch. But other than that, the Rabbanishon doesn't want you to die. It's very important. The Rabbanishon doesn't want anyone to eat chaz. It's very important. It's a mitzvah. If a Jew eats chaz, so he gets 39 lashes. But the, the Rabbanishon doesn't want dead Jews, he wants living Jews. We're children. The Holy Shabbos is violated in order to save a Jewish life. In order to save a Jewish life, we violate Shabbos even for Suffolk Bikuach Nefesh, even if there's a question. Even if the question is a Chaye Shor, I can save a person's life, but I know I'll save his life, he'll live for 10 minutes. No, 10 minutes is worth living. We are the people that put an unbelievable value on life. 
V'chai bohem is in this week's parasha. In next week's parasha, Emor, there's a posik v'nekdashti b'sok b'nei Yisrov lo sechalu Hashem kodshi. You are to make a kiddush Hashem. You are not to be, you are not to desecrate the name of God. From v'nekdashti b'sok b'nei Yisrov, we learn out there's a mitzvah of kiddush Hashem. There are some times where a person has to die for the Rebona Shalom. But those are those limited exceptions. This week's parasha is the general rule. V'chai bohem, v'lo shiyomus bohem. Next week's parasha of Nekdashti Voisachalu is the exception where a Jew has to die for God. The Bon Shalom wants living Jews. <clears throat> I'll send around Bali Neder later today. They're both in Hebrew. One is a letter from the stolen Rebbe. It's a transcript of a speech he gave to his Hasidim. And one is a speech from the Klosenberger Rebbe, which he gave to his Hasid. The Klosenberger Rebbe's mother died from coronavirus. And there were pictures of the Levaya of his mother here in Eretz Yisrael. And there were very few people at the Levaya, everybody wearing masks, everybody, I, don't, I think maybe there was a minion, a little more than a minion. Everybody was distanced, everybody was wearing masks. If you wanted to listen to the Hesped, you had to call in. They're very machmer there. The Stolner Rebbe gave a speech about being machmer in this period of time, because people, the Russian wants us to live. The Gera Rebbe Shlita, the Stolner Rebbe Shlita, the Kleisenberg Rebbe Shlita, the Gera Rebbe with all the thousands of students in Gera, with all the horaot and hakalot, with everything going on, we're gonna open schools, should open schools, yes, open schools, first grade, third grade, all these things, and this is coming from pressure on the government. The Gera Moistus, with all the heterim that the government's giving, they're not opening up. They created a program, a telephone program, for all the grades, where people are learning with their rebbies and hearing Shurma over the phone. They don't want the boys coming back to yeshiva in the meantime until they know it's absolutely safe because it's not worth it. And when we hear the, the government talking about, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we don't know where this is coming from, although we suspect a lot of it has to do with economic pressure. The idea... The idea that's being floated, malls opening, hotels opening. We understand the economic pressure. But everybody has to take care of themselves because it's a mitzvah of a chaybahem. The Rebbe Shalom wants living Jews. You hear all these things about hetevim. It doesn't mean that because the government says you can now go to a mall, go to a mall. V'chaybahem. Take care of yourselves. It's a mitzvah of the Torah. And sometimes it's Mesivus Nefesh to do the Vachai Bahem. As much as Mesivus Nefesh as to die for them. And this was the big machlokis inside the Warsaw Ghetto, which was the uprising was commemorated days ago. The Kurd Cholmoy Pesach, where the Warsaw Ghetto was destroyed. This was machlekes in the Warsaw Ghetto between Gedalia and we have letters that are extant today. Rabbi Menachem Zembo, Hashem Yunkaim Domoi, who died in the Warsaw Ghetto. He was one of the leaders of the Warsaw Ghetto uprising. There were Gedalia there. And the Gedalia felt that it's not a Kiddush Hashem to walk out with your hands up and get shot. It's not a Kiddush Hashem. At that moment in history, the Kiddush Hashem was to take up arms and to defend yourself, to show the world that Jews preserve their lives. The life of a Jew is precious to God. You walk out with your hands up and you get shot. You're basically telling the world the Jewish life has no value and God doesn't give it any value. Everybody's walking out with their hands up and getting shot. Menachem Zem ben other Gedolim, Say that's not this is not the way under these conditions. We have to show the world that Jewish life is precious. It's so precious, we're willing to fight for it, we're willing to die in the process of fighting to live for it. But the goal is to show that we're willing to fight to live. 
That's a Kiddush Hashem. People think about Kiddush Hashem. He died our Kiddush Hashem. Kiddush Hashem means also the Chaybahim. Do, do hard things to make sure you can continue living so that you can do more mitzvahs. The whole concept of violating Shabbos for a sick person is Chalelalov Shabbos Echas Kedesh Yishma Shabbatot Habei. Violate this one Shabbos, but then this person will be able to be shown the Shabbos for so many more years to come. What's the point in letting him die now and then not being able to be shown the Shabbos in the future? Violate Shabbos now, heal him now, and he'll be shown the Shabbos so many Shabbatot in the future. Fight for your life now so that you'll be able to do thousands more mitzvahs during your lifetime. Don't go out and get shot. And if God forbid a person has to go out and get shot in the Warsaw Ghetto, let the guy see that Jews believe in the preservation of life and are willing to die to preserve their very own lives. When Nahum Zemba Hashem Yimkam Domai died in the Warsaw Ghetto, he left the bunker in which he was in, Cholomoy Pesach. His grandson ran out of the door, ran out of the bunker into the street, and he ran into the street to get his grandson to protect him from the, from the Nazi fire. And as he went out into the street, he was shot. They were able to bring him back into the bunker in which he died. And eventually he was buried in Warsaw. And after he, the war was over, they removed his body from Warsaw and he's now buried at Har HaMenuchos. is a great example of a Chaybahem. You fight to live. Kiddush Hashem doesn't have to be to die. Kiddush Hashem can mean to live. We need to protect our health. We need to protect our lives. No matter what coolest we hear about, if they're appropriate under the circumstances, logically, a person has to go out with a mask and with gloves he has to get food, whatever he has to get. But Rabbi said, take care of yourselves. Hotels are open. If that's what they do, don't storm out. Oh, finally, I can get to the hotel. Take care of yourselves. It's a mitzvah. Besides, which is a mitzvah. which is a mitzvah. The Rabbi Shalom wants you to live. Because if you live, you can do thousands of more mitzvahs, and those thousands of more mitzvahs will be more kedusha, and more kedusha will be more shleimus, and more shleimus will be a greater connection to the Rabbanu Shalom. That's what the Rabbanu Shalom wants from us, the Ramchal explains, to be connected to him. You can't connect him if you're dead. Lo hamesim yehalaluka. And that comes from this week's Pasha of The flip side of this, is the mitzvah that a person has to die, Akidish Hashem, from next week's parsha of Nikdashti Besef Bnei Yisrael. You have to make a Kiddush Hashem. And sometimes that's through death, in the three circumstances, which are exceptions. But next week's parsha, it says, besides sanctifying God's name, it also says, it also says Hashem Kachi. Do not desecrate my name, which means making a Chil Hashem. And this comment is needed. And I'm sorry I have to say it. But there are awful stories, and they're almost there every day, whether it's in England, in New York, in Eretz Yisrael, locally here in Beit Shemesh, wherever it is. We are unfortunately witness to Chil Hashem. Jews taking things into their hands, things that are against government regulations, and creating a situation where Goyim are looking at us and saying, what are these Jews doing? It's a Chil Hashem. That's what the Gemara in Yuma, Adaf Pevav, calls a Chil Hashem. When people look at Jews and say, what are these Jews? They study Torah, they do mitzvahs, how can they act this way? How can a person act in a certain way after he study Torah and mitzvahs? What is this Torah and mitzvahs? If this is God's book of morals and ethics, well, something's wrong here. Either the book is not that moral and ethical, or the Jews are really not studying it properly, one of the two. But either way, the Gemara says in Yuman Pei this is a Chil Hashem. 
the incident in in New York where there were hundreds or maybe thousands of people at the Leviathan and the mayor of New York and I'm not saying anything good about the mayor of New York I don't I, I don't know what there is good to say about the mayor of New York but the mayor of New York had to criticize the Jewish community for violating the guidelines and assembling in such huge numbers for Levaya. Several weeks ago, the Novominska Rebbe Zechon and Tzadik Levracha, Zechusa Yogin Aleinu, he was the head, the head of the Moatzis Kedaili Atayra in America, the head. And Aleinu, he was nifta from COVID. The pictures of his Levaya, the head of the Moatzis Kedaili Atayra in America. There were very stringent guidelines issued by the family and publicized everywhere. Nobody was at the Levaya. You wanted to see the Levaya, there was a way I believe to Zoom. You wanted to hear the Hespid, you were able to call in. The people at the Levaya, Chevra Kadisha, there was almost no one there. There are pictures of it. The head of the Moetzis, Gedele Hatayim. And a Rav died. I assume he was a tzaddik. And hundreds or thousands of people decided to violate the guidelines in New York. And the mayor of New York had to criticize the Jewish community. That's a halashim. So what's the response of the Jewish community to this? Double standard. This is what they, this is the words they use. It's a double standard. The Goyim got together at some kind of air show or whatever. There were so many Goyim that got together without social distancing, and the mayor didn't say anything about those Goyim. This is because of anti-Semitism. It's a double standard. Rabbi Sai, Jews are the ones that set the standard. We don't go around the world saying, if a Goy got away with it, I should get away with it. That's not how Jews live. Our complaint should never be double standard. If you let the guy get away with it, let me get away with it. I don't need to prove yes or no whether de Blasio is an anti-Semite. It doesn't concern us right now. It doesn't make a difference right now. But how can you respond to Mayor de Blasio and say, Mayor de Blasio, you're wrong because this is a double standard. You let Goyim get away with it. And if you let Goyim get away with it, you should let us get away with it. Why are you criticizing Jews? That's not a Jewish argument, double standard. We set the standard for the world. We don't lower the standard to say, I want to get the same, the same coolest, and I want to get the same leniencies that you give a guy. For heaven's sake, we set the standard. And when we say it's a double standard, and we want to be treated the same way you treat guy, we want to get away with as much wrongdoing as a guy can get away with. We create a massive chilash. This is stuff, this is material we learned in elementary school. I used to go to school in the morning on a public school bus, on a city bus, to get to Minion. And many of my, many of my friends went to, on, on the bus. Many of the boys lived near the yeshiva and they walked. But many of us had to take a bus. The Rebbe used to warn us constantly. Boys, and we're talking about now fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Boys, of course, we're talking about, you know, 1968, 1970. Say, boys, when you get on the bus, it's a public transportation bus. You conduct yourselves properly. People are looking at you. You're wearing your hat or your yarmulke. Your tzitzis may be out. They're looking at how a Jew conducts himself. If an older person gets on the bus, doesn't make a difference color, doesn't make a difference religion, get up and give him the seat. Make a Kiddush Hashem. But boys, be careful. Conduct yourselves appropriately on that bus because people are watching you. We need to be very careful. We're in the middle of this coronavirus 
And never, never, never in the middle of this coronavirus, instead of thinking about how to be Makadashem Shemayim, that the Goyim can look at us and say, this is the Jewish people. Yes, Forbes magazine said that the state of Israel is the safest place to be during the coronavirus. It's a Kiddush Hashem. We have to be careful. There are other Jews looking. There are Goyim looking. And our answer can never be double standard. I don't want you to treat me on the level you treat a guy. I want you to treat me like the prestigious Jew I am. And I live on a different standard. My standard is v'chai bahem. God wants me to live and live in a way that I will be healthy. The Tolner Rebbe Shlita said during the Drusha weeks ago, when this thing was just starting, he said someone called him and said, Rebbe, it's 40 years. Every morning for 40 years, I go to the mikvah before davening. Never missed it. And I'm not feeling so well right now. And I want to go to the mikvah tomorrow morning. So the Tolna Rebbe said to him, listen, it's wonderful that you have this chumrah that you go to the mikvah every morning. We can talk about the Kona Sesra in another year. But it's very nice. It's even nicer. You do it every morning for 40 years. But I don't know if, it's, if you're sick. And you don't know yet if you're sick. You're not allowed to go to the mikvah tomorrow. Because your chumrah is not worth a suffolk a perhaps, a doubt that you may make someone else sick. You can't observe your chumrah. If there's a minute chance that someone else will get sick, where do you, where, what's the, well, tell me what your thought is. What's the thought process there? I want to do my chumrah even if someone else gets sick. Rebbe, can you tell me if that's okay? Of course it's not okay. We have to guard our own health. And as we go into the public domain, gloves, masks, whatever is necessary, we need to protect the health of other people also, Jew and Gentile alike. And that will be a Kiddush Hashem. But it's beyond imagination that in the middle of this whole thing, we have to talk about Chil Hashem. This is an unbelievable subject that needs to be discussed. In the middle of Corona, we need to discuss Jews stop making a chil Hashem. So Jews, please stop making a chil Hashem. And stop making a Kiddush Hashem. One more subject I want to talk about in the few minutes we have left. <clears throat> is a piece of chalvan that is in this week's parsha. In this week's parsha, as I mentioned, we have the Avodas Yom Kippurim. The height of the Avod of Yom Kippur was when the Kohen Gadol went into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. One time a year, you were able to enter the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur, and he, he was only allowed to enter the Holy of Holies for the Avodas HaKadoshim, to bring, to burn the incense, to bring the burning incense in and to remove the shovel and to bring it out. Those were the, the, the day, the Yom Kippur, that you can enter the Kodesh Kodesh with the Avodas HaKetores. The Ketores is a very interesting thing, more interesting than interesting. The Gemara in Shabbos <clears throat> and Daf Peites says, during the famous debate between Moshe and the Malachim, the Malachim said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Shalom, don't give the Torah to a human being, he's going to violate your commandments. Give the Torah to us, Malachim, up here, we're perfect robots, we'll be showing B'tayim mitzvahs perfectly. The Bona Shalom said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, answer them. Moshe Rabbeinu had a discussion with, a, a debate with the Malachim, they, and basically he said, look, this is not for you. Uh, the Saris Hadipa says, honor your father and your mother. You don't have a father and mother. It says, work six days and rest the seventh day. You don't work six days and you don't need a rest on the seventh day. What Torah do you want here? It's not meant for you. It's meant for human beings. And the Malachim finally said, Rabbanu Shalom, he's right, and he got the Torah. And the Gemara says that the Malachim, who were fighting, they were debating Moshe, arguing with him, they gave Moshe gifts. And the, the Gemara says 
that the Satan, the Malach HaMavis, gave Moshe a gift as well. The gift that he gave him was Ketores. He told him a secret. Ketores, properly prepared and properly done, is Otzer Magefa. It stops a plague. It saves lives, Ketores. And later on, as we'll learn when we get to Pasha's Korach, when there was a plague after the Korach incident, Moshe instructed Aaron to take Ketores and sprinkle it everywhere. And through the sprinkling of the Ketores, the Magefa Ne'etzara, the Magefa stopped. Ketores is something that's a life-giving source. It stops the Magefa. And that, would be, that is a very interesting topic to talk about these days, to be Otsar Magefa. What is Ketores? And what is the Magefa? Lo Aleinu, the Magefa we're dealing with today, the COVID-19 or the Corona, my understanding is, I'm not a doctor, obviously, my understanding is it's an attack on the respiratory system, on your breathing system. That's where the attack occurs. Very easy to understand. Ketores is something that we enjoy through our breathing system. We inhale the incense. Ketores is a purification of the respiratory system. Sometimes we say to a person, who's troubled, not feeling well. We say, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. In other words, refresh yourself. Or in other words, give yourself a new life. Take a deep breath, start again. When the Torah describes how HaKadosh Baruch Hu made man, it says, God formed him in the dust of the earth. He then put a breath, he breathed into man, a nishmas chayim, which is the neshama, it's the soul. And man was alive. Man was dead. He was laying there as a, as offer, offer min adama. He was just laying there. He had no life. God put the breath of air into his nostrils, which is his neshama. But it, the, the, the life-giving source of the person at creation went through the nose. It went through the deepach ba'ap of nishmas chayim. God didn't send the source of life through the ears. He didn't send it through the mouth. Va'ipach ba'ap of nishmas chayim. He sent it through the breathing system. In that breathing system went the neshama, and that became the source of physical life, breathing, and the source of spiritual life, the neshama. The ktores, the incense, you didn't eat the incense, you didn't hear the incense, you didn't see incense, you breathed incense. And this was a way, when it's done with the proper recipe, the 11 samonim, the 11 specific spices that went into the ketores, the God-given recipe, when this recipe was mixed correctly, it was refreshing. It gave the person a new life. And it's Otsar Magefa, because this special ketores, God's recipe, once it's inhaled, and you breathe it into your system, it purifies you physically, it purifies you spiritually. And that happened, that ultimate, of course, Ketores was brought every day in the Beis Hamikdash. In the morning and the afternoon, Ketores was brought. But only, but that was brought on the Mizbeach HaKetores, which was outside the Kodesh Kadoshim. Ketores to be brought in the Kodesh Kadoshim is only one day a year on Yom Kippur. We need to go back to Yom Kippur. As I said, when this thing started, something happened this past Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur in the Sersi Chuva. Rosh Hashanah, Sersi Chuva, and Yom Kippur of Tov Shin Pei. Something happened. We don't know why, but Ramchal tells us there's a purpose and there is a why. But something happened between Rosh Hashanah, Sersi Chuva, and Yom Kippur. 
where a decree of corona was issued to the world to occur at a given moment from a given place in the world to start from a specific place, from a specific person. All this was examined a Shemaim, none of this is coincidence. There was a Xerah that a particular person would contract, would contract it and he would spread it and would go to different nations and each nation would, 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 would have to deal with a certain amount of losses never. This is all Rosh Hashanah, Aserish Meitzu, Yom Kippur time. And Halavai, we had a time machine to go back to Rosh Hashanah, Aserish Meitzu, and Yom Kippur. And Davin again. Usashuvu, Tfilu, Utsadaka, Mavirin, Esroa, Hagzeru. Halavai, we had that opportunity to go back in time and to stand again. And Davin again for health, prosperity, knowing what it means for Xero. We don't have that time machine. We have an opportunity to Shabbos. The Shabbos, the Balkari is gonna read Achrimos. It's the Avodas Yom HaKippur. Listen to it. If you have a repressive minion, try to listen to it. If you don't have a repressive minion, stay home and read Achremos Kedosh. Try to learn it with Rashi. Try to learn the Avodas Yom Kippur. The Gemara Menachas tells us that when you learn about Karbanas, it's as if you brought the Karban. Make believe you're a kind God of the Shabbos. Make believe you're going into the Kodesh Kedoshim and the the description of entering the Kodesh Kadosh with the Torah says in Pasha's Achrimos, read those Psukim. It's as if you will be walking into the Kodesh Kadosh with the Torah. And the Torah can be Otsar Magefa. And think about what it means, the Torah. It's a new breath of life, a new breath of physical life, a new breath of spiritual life. It's a protection for my respiratory system. And not just think about yourself, think about Kali Yisrael, because when the Kohen God entered the Kodesh Kadosh, he didn't think just about himself, he thought about him being the shliach of all of Klal Yisrael. Think about Klal Yisrael as you're learning the parasha with Rashi, and you're learning about the Ketoros. Think about all of Klal Yisrael, to give them a fresh start, to give them a healthy start. So the Chalvan says on the first page of the handout, Le Ketoros hoisa segula miuchetes, reach haktoros m'ores nekudus haleiv. The scent of the Ketoros awaken the nekudus haleiv, the depths of a person's heart. The Ketoros Ha'isa Segula Muchedes. Ketoros had a very special Segula. Ha'reach shehis pashet mimeno ba'emtsos anan ha'ktoros pa'al b'ula amuka ma'od b'kev ha'am Yisrael. On Yom Kippur, when the Ketoros rose out of the Kodesh Kedoshim or filled the Kodesh Kedoshim, we're not going to go into Yavodos Yom Kippur. Please do that on, on Shabbos. But it had a distinct effect on all of Klal Yisrael. Deep down, Remember, the Kohen Gadol entered the depths of holy place. There's no deeper, quote unquote. The depths of holiness in terms of place is the Kodesh Kadosh. He entered the deepest place, the deepest Makam of Kedusha with Ketoros. And that Ketoros was meant to enter the deepest place in the human being. The Kohen Gadol entered the deepest place of Kedusha, the Kodesh Kedoshim, and offered the Ketoros to enter the deepest place in the Yid, in his lave Panim, in his inside. Reishis, first of all, the Chalban says, you do it's known, Sha Ketoros is Shpashtol Merchov Mrav. Ad Sha Gemar Misaper Zulashon. This is a quote from the Gemara in Yuma. Izim Shebi Yericho Hoyu Misachos Merei HaKetoros. Anybody know the difference between the base Hamikdash and Yericho? It's a nice distance. The Gemara says that goats in Yericho would sneeze because the Ketores was in the air as distant as Yericho. So the goats would sneeze. Noshim Sheb Yericho, Einan Srichas Lis Passe Mireach Ketores. Women, excuse me, women that lived in Yericho did not have to put on perfume because they, everyone smelled so beautiful in Yericho from the Ketoros that came from the Beis Hamikdash. Kaloshev Yushalayim Einat Tzricha Liskashit Mereach HaKetoros. 
a kala that was getting ready for a chuppah in Yerushalayim, she didn't really have to put on fancy jewelry to look, make herself look beautiful because she had the reich of Victorious with her that was such a beautiful reich, she didn't even need jewelry. Amr Abelazah ben Dagloi, Abelazah ben Dagloi said, it's absolutely true. This is not some legend, chas v'shalom, and none of the Gemara is a legend. But Rabbi Loza ben Nagloi says, Izim li baha, bahar machvar. My father had goats on har machvar. And they, they used to sneeze. When we knew that the ktoris was being offered, they, they would sneeze. So the Chalvan now explains at the bottom of the page. The way the Ketores um, spread out was not coincidental. The scent of the Ketores was a high, high level of Kedusha. The Ketores is Mechuvan. It directs itself to the inner side, the innermost parts of a Jewish person. The Reh Haktoris went into the nostrils. It went into your respiratory system. The respiratory system is your Nashima. That's where your life comes from. It went in there and it affected your whole life system, your spiritual life system, your physical life system. Take a deep breath. It was like a song that went into your life. A beautiful song to the ears is the Reh Haktores into the nostrils. And then at the bottom of the page, he quotes a czar. We don't have time to really quote the czar, but I'd like to mention the following. <clears throat> you have the handout, it's the next page. There's a lot of czar that speaks about the Ketoris. And it speaks about it in the context that we spoke about earlier. Moshe Rabbeinu was given the gift, the secret of Ketoris, that it can be Otsar Magefa. And the Zohar Kodesh says that a person that reads the Maisach Ketoris every day, the same way the, the Ketoris itself was Oitzah Magefa, reading the Parsha of Ketoris every day can be Oitzah Magefa, can protect a person. I'm not talking now about schoolers. I'm, people have been enough of my shiurim. I'm not, I'm not a schooler person. I'm a two feet on the ground person. But the Torah tells us that doesn't mean if you're a school of person, you don't have two feet on the ground. But I'm, I'm just saying that there are people that are school of people, they say if you, if you do this and this and this with two eggs and one chicken and you do this and this and this, then your, your vision comes back, okay? This is a Torah given concept. The Torah says, oh, it's my gave Torah concept one. We know that from the Gemara in Shabbos, Moshe Rabbeinu was given the secret, the gift. We know that Moshe Rabbeinu used the gift. It's a Pasuk in the Torah, in Pasha's Kaira. Torah 1. Torah 2. The Gemara Menachem says that when you study something about the Karbanas, or something about the Avod and the Beis HaMikdash, it's as if you're actually doing it. So when you read and learn about the Ketores, it's, it's as if you're actually bringing Ketores. And actually bringing Ketores, purifies you physically, purifies you spiritually, and brings health to a person. So that when we read about the Ketavis and learn about the Ketavis, until that time, Rabbi Isai, that we are successful and we have other people join us, helping us learn Mesech Demidus, to build the base Hamikdash, until that great day, we can only learn that we'll have Meher Bimeinu. Until that day, we can only learn the Pasha Ketavis. And when we learn the Pasha Ketavis, it's as if we brought Ketavis, and we bring, bring Kateris for ourselves, for our families, for all of Klal Yisrael. Take the deep breath, learn Pashas HaKateris. 
and the Zohar HaKadosh says that you should say this every day. It's in your Sidurim. Some people say it in Karbonis before Ms. Moshir, before Hodu. It's printed there. Some people say it after Ein Kelokeinu. There's a shorter version, a longer version. But get into the habit of saying the Pitum HaKetoris. Get into the habit of saying Pitum HaKetoris. And as you say it, try to learn it as well. For those people who need resources, where do I learn about the Torahs? I'll be happy to send you resources. So today, we learned about the Beis HaMikdash. Five entrances from the Harabayas. There was a Chayel. And then you walked through the Chayel. You got to the Azora. The Azora had seven entrances. <clears throat> One of the places that the Kohanim guarded was the base of Tinas on the southern wall. Not the southern wall, the Harabayas, the southern wall of the, near the Azora. And in the base of Tinas, they learned about how to make a Torah. We learned about the Shah Nicanor and the 15 steps to Shah Malos, the miracle that happened to Nicanor. And miracle doesn't just mean mysterious nefesh willing to die. It means giving it all to live. This week's parasha, v'chai bahem. We learned about becoming holy. Kedoshim tiyu kikadosh, because becoming holy means that you become a shalei, and becoming a shalei means you can connect to God. We learned about v'chai bahem to take care of our health. No matter what the government tells us we can do, Think about it twice, whether it's something you should do or whether this thing is coming from economic pressures from corners of the community. We learned about Yehorik Val Yavo, but there's also a mitzvah to live and to take care of ourselves. And there's also a mitzvah, don't make a chalash and be careful what you do. People are looking at us. Don't let the goyim look at us and say, Jews, don't let other Jews look at, you, at us and say, look at how they're conducting themselves. We're not looking for a double standard. We don't care about double standard. We're interested in double standards. We don't want to be left to the double standard. We don't want to be on the standard of the guy. We want to be the people that set the standard. We want to be the people that people turn to and say, Jews, look how they conduct themselves. That's an example I want to emulate. We don't want to say, I want to be treated like the guy. We set the standard that we're not interested in double standards. This Shabbos, we have an opportunity to go back in time a bit to Yom Kippur. In Achrei Mos, we can learn the Avodah, listen to it, learn it, spend time on the Avodah Yom Kippur, transport yourself a bit back to Yom Kippur. We need another Yom Kippur. Something happened, Yom Kippur, Tav Shin Pei. We need to replay it. We have that opportunity to Shabbos. We have the opportunity to learn the Maisak Torahs, we'll play the Torahs. And by learning it as if we're doing it, and by doing it, it's, we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting all of Kal Yisrael. Those Jews who need Rafua should have Rafua. Those Jews who need Nechamah should have Nechamah. Those Jews who need Yeshua should have Yeshua. The Rav Shalom should open the minds and the hearts of all Jews that they understand what a Kiddush Hashem is, and they understand what a Chil Hashem is that they make a Kiddush Hashem, they avoid a Chil Hashem. The Rav Shalom should continue to send Chizik to those who lead this country. They should make the right decisions for the country and make the right decisions for the right reasons, not coming from pressure and making the wrong decisions, Chas Shalom. The Rav Shalom should continue to give Chizik to all the medical care providers all over, or my Senefesh, to make everybody healthy. I want to thank Shmuel Elowat and the others who make possible to have the Zoom program that we're having. Mi'et Hashem next Tuesday, only Tuesdays. Tuesday, the Zoom will begin at 9. It'll, we'll be continuing the Shayahu Shir. We've been learning the VM for many years, women's Shir. Men can join now through the Zoom. We're learning Yeshayahu. We'll be picking up Tuesday, 9 o'clock in the morning. We're up to chapter 11 in Yeshayahu. 
That's where we left off before Purim, chapter 11 of Rishayo is the Haftorah of the eighth day of Pesach, something we don't know about anymore, that eighth day of Pesach in Putzlaret. But there's a beautiful Haftorah on the eighth day of Pesach, Od Hayom Beno, that comes from the end of Yeshaya 10 and the beginning of Yeshaya 11. Yeshaya 11 is the description of Melech HaMashiach from Hevi Amenu. So that will be on Tuesdays. The Zoom will start at 9. It will go to about 9.55 on Tuesdays with Yeshaya. And then the Zoom will pick up at 10 a.m. with the morning call of Midos Ramchal each day of the week at 10, except Tuesday at 9. Everybody have a wonderful day, a gesunde day, a good day. A day we're going to make in the if, I don't know why I'm saying afternoon, it's because it's almost 12 o'clock. The Beis Hamikdash can come down today if we want it passionately, passionately. So sometimes when you're off in your corner or taking a walk, think about these things. Think about Beis Hamikdash, think about Ramchal, think about these things and have a wonderful, safe, healthy day and have a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you.